स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दैट पेपर द डिटेल्स ऑफ दैट पेपर ऑफ द ऑफ दैट मॉडल द इनर वर्किंग ऑफ दैट न्यूरल नेटवर्क एंड द एडवांटेजेस दैट द क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग न्यूरल नेटवर्क हैज ओवर द क्लासिकल वन देन आई शो यू हाउ टू इम्प्लीमेंट द प्रोग्राम द इम्प्लीमेंट हाउ टू इम्प्लीमेंट द प्रोग्राम योर सेल्फ इन जस्ट फ्यू इन जस्ट फ्यू स्टेप्स then i'll be giving you an intro to the various platforms and the packages uh, that are present for quantum machine learning that are being developed by the big uh, companies in the market uh, then i'll share some resources to help you get started uh, after the session i'll be sharing more resources that uh, can help you get started into quantum machine learning some tutorials and some lectures that you can go into uh, so uh, and i'll also be uh, Uh, writing down some papers that are uh, describe different approaches to quantum machine learning that have been fundamental in changing the field of quantum uh, and developing the field of quantum machine learning yeah um so the different interpretations of quantum machine learning are, are as following the first one which is not usually what we call as quantum machine learning is just applying classical machine learning to any problem of quantum physics or quantum information processing for example there is a problem in which you have to uh, trap electrons in a magnetic electronic trap uh, magnetic electric trap uh, that is uh, we use uh, we have to trap electrons for some uh, experiments say example uh, say for uh, like diffraction or anything that uh, that is a quantum physics problem and that is just solved by applying quantum uh, uh, by applying classical machine learning to it we change the different parameters to know how to trap that electron uh, Uh, how to trap more number of electrons uh, um, optimally uh, or like the same problems are present there with uh, superconduct uh, with superconductor and stuff um, the second approach which is more close to what is called quantum machine learning is using hybrid algorithms uh, so these are hybrid classical quantum algorithms uh, which use quantum computations or measurements to provide a speed up to the classical algorithms or, or to the classical ml techniques this uh, as it's written is called quantum enhanced ml and the paper that we discussed below in short uh, is an example of that hybrid approach then there is an approach uh, which is uh, about the uh, adaptations of the classical algorithms for the quantum for quantum computers and uh, that adaptation again uh, provides a speed up to the uh, uh, to the classical algorithms uh, so for example the examples are qav qga and qsvm which is uh, quantum variation eigen uh, eigen solver uh, quantum uh, general adversarial network and quantum support vector machine svm ga and all of these are a common classical uh, ml methods um uh, one second yeah um now just a small primer to class uh, to uh, classical neural networks um, so here i'll discuss the basic elements of an artificial neural network uh, but uh, and let me first tell you about what a goal of an artificial neural network is so uh, what a classical artificial neural network does is it takes some labeled data which is data which has some input variables that map to some output variable uh, to some target variables uh, so our goal is to find the mapping and to predict the labels of new data instances uh, if if i have new data instances so what will be the output for those data instances uh, and uh, what this uh, what this is an example of uh, what is called uh, supervised learning there are other types of learning that unsupervised learning reinforcement learning semi supervised learning and all of that but here we will be focusing about supervised learning because that is the most famous uh, type form of learning and that is the most uh, like the most uh, researched upon um so yeah uh, so yeah the, the, the basic elements of an artificial neural network um one second so this is a diagram of an artificial neural network uh so this is firstly an input layer where we put in our data uh, put in the data that we have and that we want to uh, do some analysis on uh, these will be called neurons these uh, these are some nodes that are called neurons uh, then there are some hidden uh, layers uh, like the hidden layers can depend on the person making the uh, neural network and uh, so the hidden layer is something that we have to optimize on to get better performance for the neural network um so there are connections between this uh, neural uh, between these neurons and the neurons in the hidden layers so there are uh, so in a feed forward a feed forward fully connected neural network all the neurons will be connected to all the neurons in the next layer but uh, there are neural networks which, which are not fully connected so they won't have all of the connections so but but here we are talking about fully connected ones uh, in the full, fully connected neural networks uh, there are connections between all neurons from the first layer and the second layer and from the second layer to third layer and so on 
uh, all of these connections have some weight associated with it uh, this weight is a parameter which which is fundamental to our learning process this weight is what we want to optimize on and what we want to change um, one second uh, yeah uh, so uh, th there is this connection to the neuron uh, uh, to the hidden layers and for each layer there is also an associated activation function um, um, so what uh, this activation function is very important as it helps to maintain the universality of the neural network uh, that is the neural network will be able to map linear as well as nonlinear functions um, for this reason the neural networks are called universal approximators so without the activation function uh, without a nonlinear activation function that is the neural network will be uh, will only be applicable for linear functions and that uh, that won't do us any good because linear functions are only a small uh, minority of the cases that we find in daily lives um, then uh, yeah um, so after each layer there is an activation function that uh, that does some calculations and gives that uh, gives the output to the next layer and to the next layer and to the next layer um, so after completing all the hidden layers we get to the output layer uh, which contains the desired value that we want or uh, we compare this value with the value of the target variable that we already possess in the data so uh, we measure the difference between the de desired output and the target output and encode it in something which is called the loss function this loss function is another very important thing for the neural network uh, uh, this loss function is what we have to optimize so as to make the uh, so as to minimize the difference between the uh, target uh, between the target output and the desired output um, so once we are able to optimize this loss function uh, by tweaking the different parameters which I talked about earlier in, in the neural network, after tweaking those parameters, we can uh, minimize the loss function and therefore we'll have an approximation of the mapping from the input to the output, uh, which is what we wanted in the first place. Uh, so now we can predict the output given a new data point uh, to a very good approximation. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, this is just the summary of what I said. Uh, if you want to take a minute to read it, you can. Uh, otherwise, I'll be sharing the PPT after the uh, presentation. Uh, sorry. So yeah, this just uh, summarizes what I've just spoken. Uh, the input layer provides data. This goes to the uh, hidden layers, then to the output layers. Then uh, this is called the feed forward step. Then after we find out the loss function, we try to minimize it using optimization algorithms. Uh, th and that is done using a back propagation step uh, which goes backward so like uh, at every iteration we do a feed forward step and a back propagation uh, back, back propagation step so through this through many iterations we minimize our loss function and uh, after minimizing the loss function we have found an approximate mapping of the function that we wanted to do uh, moving on um, now going to the quantum side of things uh, uh, we know what the basic elements of quantum computation are. I, I think all of uh, all of you are, must be familiar with the basics of the of quantum computing. Um, so uh, the basics of the uh, the basic elements are qubits, which encode quant uh, quantum states. Um, so this is a qubit uh, represented on a block sphere. Something like this is called the block sphere, which is uh, which has the parameters of phi uh, and theta and psi. Uh, so, uh, and uh, we have the uh, basis vector states zero, uh, ket zero and ket one. Um, uh, uh, the second thing that we have is quantum gates, which uh, operates on these qubits. Uh, the gate that is of interest to us is the RY gate. The RY gate is dependent only on one one parameter theta. Uh, that is, it changes the parameter. Uh, it changes the theta of the uh, of the qubit that it is acting on. It uh, it is a uh, this gate is the uh, is it is a rotation operator uh, and it does a single qubit rotation uh, through an angle theta around the y axis that is why it's called the ry uh, operator um yeah now i'll explain the structure of the qcnn um, uh, first a pictorial representation of this, what the structure is uh, comparing it to the um, classical counterpart this is an input layer uh, oh, sorry uh, this is a hidden layer uh, with all of these gates and this is an output layer. Uh, then there are uh, calculations on a classical computer. Uh, this is what uh, you know encodes our hybrid uh, approach. That this all of this is done on a quantum computer. This is a circuit is on a quantum computer. 
and the uh, optimization part is done on a classical computer um so yeah uh, okay so yeah um so firstly talking about our hidden layer our hidden hidden layer contains these uh, gates which are called c not gates these c not gates are a very fundamental gate for quantum computing and uh, these help to entangle these different qubits together uh then these uh, pass through a rotation para uh, the rotation parameter which is the uh, rotation qubit uh which is dependent on the rotation parameter theta uh, all layers have one uh, rotation qubit uh, rotational gate here uh then uh, after the rotation uh this is what happens to the qubit like uh, this has changed by 90 degrees this has changed by some uh, angle this is in the some angle etc etc uh so these and then measurements classical measurements are made on these qubits these measurements uh, uh, go into a classical computer we try uh, we find the error function or the loss function we try to optimize these rotational parameters through back propagation step and and so on and we keep on optimizing this rotation parameter we keep on tweaking this theta uh, uh, these rotation parameters such that uh, for a new data instance uh if we have a new data instance we get the right answer on passing through this circuit um so yeah uh, i'll explain to summarize it again uh, um so yeah the one second uh uh yeah the, again the hidden layer that which we talked about consists of control not gates for entanglement and roi gates uh, uh, as i said they are a single qubit rotation gate uh, with the rotation around y axis uh, represented on the block sphere um what uh, what we do is to increase the performance of our uh, model we use six such hidden layers uh, like adding in hidden layers helps uh, generally add, helps in the uh, performance of the model even in classical uh, uh, neural networks so we use six such hidden layers and the last qubit is then measured using something called the poly z measurement so uh, as i said these are this is the last qubit and this is measured through something called the poly, uh, poly z measurement uh, yeah uh, so th this poly z measurement operator which is applied to these last qubits uh, it gives a value 1 or minus 1 uh, it only gives these values so this is a very good uh, this is very good because we want a uh, we want to uh, classify the data in a binary uh, fashion so uh, um, we have 1 or minus 1 uh, so if you want to predict something uh, one would be a positive a uh, true value or minus 1 would be a, a false value and yeah so One and uh, minus one is convenient for us that way. Um, so as we know, we have six hidden layers, uh, and each hidden layer has one uh, has one single qubit uh, single qubit rotation. So uh, that is the parameter the parameter that we have to optimize. So we have thirty parameters that we have to optimize uh, one for each layer. Uh, the calculation is basically five into six. Yeah, uh, I hope you got that. Um, yeah um then now i'll explain the uh, the inner workings of the quantum uh, the artificial neural network and how to basically implement the neural network how the what the entire model is so uh, this we know is the quantum circuit that we use for uh, the model uh, but firstly we have to input the data onto this quantum circuit we have to encode the data in such a way that it can be input uh, onto the uh, the uh, the qubits so for that we do something called the state preparation uh, i'm sorry the, we do something called the state preparation process uh, which is uh, we're encoding the input data onto the qubits um, uh, as a quantum gate so uh, this is done in two ways which is uh, one is amplitude embedding that is we're uh, encoding the data onto the amplitude of the qubit or phase embedding uh, phase embedding which is uh, encoding the data onto the phase of the qubit Uh, here in this paper that i'm uh, explaining we do uh, amplitude embedding um so uh, then we have the entanglement uh, through the c not gate this causes the qubits to uh, interact uh, uh, then the hidden hidden layer contains a single qubit gates that we talked about uh, <clears throat> then the state of the desired qubit this the desired qubit the output qubit uh, is then measured and compared with the target output value here uh and through many rotation uh, sorry through many iterations the rotation parameters are uh, tweak this these rotation parameters are tweaked such that we reach an optimal value for the loss functions and um, we can make accurate pre uh, predictions uh, for our uh, new data instances uh 
okay so the learning process uh, going into further detail of the learning process uh, we use the amplitude embedding ske uh, scheme as i mentioned earlier uh, the uh, the hidden layers of uh, cube uh, the hidden layer connects uh, consists of connections between qubits uh, so in the artificial neural network we had connections uh, between each neuron but here we have connections only uh, between two layers which so we have five layers and there are only uh, five connections between those layers so uh, we reduce on the number of connections uh, that we are making therefore reducing on the number of parameters that we have to optimize um, again uh, the states of the qubits are modified using gates with certain rotation parameter uh, uh, then we we uh, then we compare the actual output value with the target value and optimize the rotation parameters of gates until we get the desired output after measurement uh, so all the quantum operations are uh, are done on a near term quantum computer that is uh, a quantum computer which uh, has uh, which does not completely have no noise tolerance and the uh, however the optimization of the rotation parameters is done on a classical computer uh, uh, so yeah as i spoke earlier this is a hybrid approach, approach using both classical and quantum computers um, so now uh, you must be wondering about what uh, what the advantages of the uh, quantum uh, the hybrid approach is so here we are able to save on uh, space complexity uh, so uh, using just k qubits we can store 2 to the power k attributes uh, so for example uh, the data that I, i have used for the model has just uh, has 30 features or 30 attributes now these 30 attributes uh, can be stored onto 5 qubits because uh, uh, 2 to the power 5 is 32 and uh, yeah we can store those 30 attributes on onto those 5 qubits uh, with uh, some padding because there are two extra spaces with that we have uh, um, so yeah the, uh, our uh, attribute will be saved in such a way uh, therefore you can see we have 32 ways of saving it uh, just because uh, we can uh, just because uh, each uh, each qubit can have a value of 0 and 1 and we have entangled these qubits so uh, the wave the quantum state can be represented this way um so on yeah um so so the uh, the quantum algorithm has a major advantage in terms of space complexity because we only uh, we are only using five qubits to encode all that data that we have um secondly the using uh, qubits as neurons we are able to reduce the number of parameters to be optimized drastically as there is no such connection to be made between the layers which i mentioned earlier uh, in the case of the classical neural network uh, the a reasonable approximation would require at least 300 parameters uh, uh, in total uh, 300 parameters uh, for uh, this 300 number comes from the approximation that uh, i take an input layer Uh, with 13 uh, new uh, with 13 nodes, uh, then there are uh, then there is a hidden layer with nine nodes, then there is a hidden layer with three nodes, and then there is an output layer. So this would have 300 parameters, and this is a very small neural network which would not give very good performance because it only has two hidden layers. So even with the neural network that perform that has bad performance, we have 300 parameters with us that we have to optimize. Uh, and now in this uh, in this hybrid approach we have reduced the number of parameters from 300 to just 30 uh, because we have uh, yeah because we have 30 uh, uh, gates as we talked about in this uh, structure we have 30, uh, we have six such layers and five such gates so we have 30 parameters in total uh, yeah um and the way we measure the outputs uh, using the poly z gates we don't uh, really need an activation function uh, here uh, to do the uh, to make the uh, to make our uh, readings uh, to make our observations uh, non linear uh, so, sorry to map a non linear function uh, we can just do that with the use of the poly z gate um, so this also sp uh, saves us on computation complexity as we don't have to uh, make another calculation for the activation function um now coming to now coming to how to implement the program yourself uh, so this is a short uh, recipe uh, for in, uh, writing the code uh, uh, this is very similar to machine learning the normal uh, the classical machine learning uh, code so uh, i think most of you would be able to get it if you have some familiarity with uh, machine learning so firstly you just import all packages 
uh, how are the packages here are uh, about our Q- uh, QML libraries to like Penny Lane. Um, I'll talk a bit about Penny Lane later. It is basically Q- uh, a Python library. So yeah, uh, we have Penny Lane. We have, uh, for this program, we need Penny Lane, NumPy, Pandas. Uh, we need uh, something called amplitude embedding from Penny Lane, and and there is also a NumPy specialized for Penny Lane. So uh, the NumPy that we use in the program will not be the normal NumPy. It will be uh, NumPy from Penny Lane because that NumPy is uh, made compatible with the different quantum simulators and uh, all the different uh, all the different ways that we program in a quantum computer. Uh, then we also have our optimization algorithm, which is the uh, momentum uh, optimizer. So we also have to import the uh, nested of momentum optimizers, uh, optimizer from Penny Lane. Uh, then we do something called uh, we declare a quantum device. So a quantum device is a thing in as a computational object in Penny Lane. It is something that can apply quantum operation and measurements uh, onto our data, onto our model, or uh, onto our code. So that is a quantum device. We just have to declare the quantum device in one line. Um, a quantum device can also uh, can also uh, can be a sim- quantum simulator. Or it can be uh, maybe if you connect it well, it can be uh, an, a quantum uh, computer from IBM. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, so that is what a quantum device is. Um, then we construct the quantum circuit layout. Uh, the quantum circuit layout, as we talked about earlier, is the five qubits, the C naught gates, the R Y gates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, then we apply. Uh, then we take the data. We input the data. And then we apply the amplitude embedding scheme on the data to encode the data onto the five qubits that we have. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, then we create. Uh, then we create our uh, quant- uh, then a quantum machine learning model by defining the fun- uh, by defining functions for the uh, ML algorithms. Uh, the ML algorithm that we we'll u- use here is called the variational classifier uh, that comes in Penny Lane. Uh, we then de- we define the loss function the, or the cost function, and uh, we also define our uh, evaluation matrix. The uh, evaluation matrix, uh, for those of you who don't know, are just numbers that tell us how good our model is. So there are things like accuracy, precision, recall of the model. Um, uh, then uh, yeah, then we get on with the real stuff, uh, which is uh, the data. Pre- uh, we do the data pre-processing. Uh, so uh, the, which involves the feature scaling and the split of data into train uh, train sets, test sets, and validation sp- uh, sets. Uh, we do this uh, for uh, again for improving our model and for improving the usefulness of our model. Feature scaling is something that is a very common data preprocessing technique, which normalizes um, uh, the numbers in the data so as uh, they all have some kind of an equal contribution to the uh, output and not that. Uh, uh, and not that uh, one attribute has a very big co- uh, contribution to the uh, to the output just because it contains large numbers. Um, then we declare the optimization algorithm to be used, which, as I said, is the momentum optimizer, which is just an improvement of the uh, very famous gradient descent uh, or the stochastic gradient descent. Uh, um, then uh, we f- then our model is prepared, our data is prepared. Now what we do is just fit the model over the data, and we, then we make predictions using that model. Um, prediction, uh, we make predictions. We then check our evaluation metrics. Then we try. Uh, then yeah, like this is the basic layout. But then uh, to try to improve the model, we do something. Uh, we do something called hyperparameter tuning, which is just changing the different par- uh, hyperparameters of the model. The hyperparameter of the model is uh, like we can change the depth of the model. That is, we can uh, increase the number of hidden layers, or we can increase the uh, number of nodes somehow. Uh, those are the hyperparameters, uh, which are, are not really uh, necessary for this discussion, uh, but like it is a very important thing that we have to do while creating a model. Um, so now I'll talk about different platforms uh, for QML. So the first and the most important is the is Penny Lane. So Penny Lane is a new platform, but it is very famous and it has uh, it has a very good documentation. It is uh, one of the top uh, leading model, uh, one of the leading uh, libraries for uh, for quantum machine learning. So what this does is it combines uh, ML packages with quantum simulators and and hardware. Um, then there is the famous Qiskit Aqua. Uh, Qiskit is the most famous quantum computing. Um, uh, 
uh, paradigm, I guess. Um, so yeah, the uh, so we have Kiskit Aqua, which has some classification algorithms like uh, quantum support vector machines and uh, variation quantum classifiers. Um, uh, then we have uh, by TensorFlow uh, by Google the TensorFlow quantum, which um, which uh, integrates the technologies of uh, a TensorFlow and SIRQ, which is the quantum computing paradigm, uh, quantum computing uh, software by Google. Uh, then we have Paddle Quantum, Q Sharp. Uh, another important one is Strawberry Fields, uh, which is a Python library for designing, optimizing, and utilizing photonic quantum computers. Uh, in a minute, I'll just show you all of how all of these platforms look like and what you can do with these platforms, the tutorials and all. Uh, then there is a forest by Rigetti. Um, um, yeah. Um, then these are some resources that are very good for uh, for this discussion above. Uh, the first two are uh, just about uh, artificial neural network. Uh, this is a great, great book by Michael Nielsen, the same Nielsen as the book on quantum computing by Nielsen and Chuang. Uh, so Michael Nielsen is a is an expert in both the fields, quantum computing and in artificial intelligence. This book is a must read if anyone is interested in neural networks. Uh, then there is uh, the playlist by Three Blue and Brown, which gives a very intuitive uh, discussion of what uh, how what neural networks are and how they function inside. Uh, uh, then there is the paper uh, which has been attached with uh, has been attached on MS Teams, which this discussion was based on, uh, which just gives one hybrid approach for the uh, quantum machine learning. Then there is uh, uh, then I'll take you to these uh, in a second. Uh, these are the uh, websites by uh, Penny Lane, uh, TensorFlow Quantum, and the Qiskit uh, approach. Um, so yeah, oh, wait a second. Uh, and these are some important papers that have been fundamental in uh, developing this field. So uh, you can see there is uh, there is uh, quantum algorithms for unsupervised learning, for reinforcement learning, for reinforcement learning again. And uh, what this is, this is machine learning for many body physics. Uh, this is the quantum machine learning approach that I talked about in the first place. Uh, the one which is not really, uh, uh, which isn't really called quantum machine learning now. Uh, the one which is like just classical machine learning on quantum physics problems. Uh, the second one, uh, this one is again the same thing. And yeah, that's my presentation. Now, uh, for a second, I'll just show you uh, these different resources that you can use to get started with quantum machine learning. Uh, give me a second, I'll present my screen. Uh, is my screen visible? Is Penny Lane visible? Uh, Vakar, can you confirm? Uh, no, I think you've only shared the uh, Adobe Read. Okay, one second. Uh, let me stop sharing and start printing. Uh, yeah, is it visible now? Yeah, yeah. So this is Penny Lane. This is a very important uh, platform for quantum machine learning. Um, so yeah, you have a lot of demos. There is a hackathon type thing here. Uh, so if you're going to play, there are there are basics. Uh, there are basic tutorials here. A basic qubit rotation that was used in our program. Uh, then uh, there are all these programs. Uh, then these are the more uh, advanced tutorials. Uh, so like uh, you can see this has everything in it. This has like uh, a curve fitting, a uh, variation quantum solver. And yeah, uh, this is uh, and this is a very interesting one, which is learning to learn, which is a meta learning technique, which means that uh, we apply a machine learning technique on a machine learning technique uh, to optimize that machine learning technique. Uh, so we use a machine learning technique to uh, to optimize the parameters, uh, to optimize the parameters itself. Um, so and then there are different ways of optimization, uh, different optimization algorithms that is. Um, so yeah, uh, and all of these are very good, very well explained inside. Um, 
then there's a community uh, it has the people who have written their papers and they've attached their code along with it so like you can check these out and see uh, what people are actually trying to do uh, yeah so this is penilene this is a very this is just basically a python library so it can be easily installed it has the documentation etc etc everything then by google there is tensorflow quantum which is also important but i think less important than penilene um this has uh, all its guides and tutorials this has uh, like basic basic programs in quantum computing uh, quantum uh, machine learning like mni mnist classification etc etc as you can see there is also convolutional neural networks here and yeah uh, reinforcement learning uh, everything is present here um then there is a by kiskit in the uh, kiskit notebook uh, the famous kiskit uh, textbook sorry uh, there is this hybrid uh, quantum classical neural network approach which is very similar to what we uh, just did right now the paper that we covered right now um, so yeah you can also try that uh, but at the end of this one um, it, it is basically it is somehow different from our uh, program because this is about uh, multi class classification um but yeah uh, and this does not provide a very good advantage over the classical machine learning algorithms um, so yeah uh, so you can try to explore this more and try to optimize this code as well uh, then there is uh, sorry uh, wait huh. this is kiskit aqua then wait i wanted to show paddle uh, yeah so this is kiskit aqua uh, which has just like three or four uh, machine learning algorithms one second Huh. So, uh, Kiskit machine learning has. Oh, uh, yeah. So basically, uh, I can't find it right now, but it has just three or four optimization classification algorithms. Um, so this is not very uh, adapted towards machine learning as of yet. Uh, and this was the code that we had discussed in the uh, the code that we discussed in our program. Uh, on just uh, as you can see on just 60 iterations uh, it will perform well um, so like one second it starts with an accuracy uh, with the accuracy of 75% uh, on the training set and the validation accuracy is 72% then it increases on to 9 uh, one second sorry uh, increase on to 90% for both then it decreases a bit then it increases and so on so and this is just 60 iterations and uh, so this works well uh, uh, and also the uh, the number of parameters that we have to uh, change uh, that we have to optimize and the space complexity and all we have an advantage over on that and uh, another feature uh, one second. Huh, uh, and so yeah this uh, computation complexity space complexity uh, saves us this saves us a lot of time because uh, if you see in a usual uh, ml model it can take maybe if it's a big model uh, if it's a large amount of data it can take at least a minute or two to just uh, get done with 60 or 100 iterations so yeah uh, and this this can be done uh, pretty quick so yeah uh, that was my presentation i'll stop sharing my screen now. Mm, yeah um